relationships always bring up the most crap. You know, the thought that you'd have is like, well, they're, they might leave, right? Like, I don't want to scare them off or leave. But really the truth is, is that you're just saying subconsciously, I'd be thinking to myself, well, that just means that uh, like subconsciously, I think I'm not really worth it. Well, so remember those, these but, protect you. So right. when you express a boundary with a partner, what you're doing is you are empowering yourself to act like an adult in the relationship. Yeah. Instead mm -hmm. of having there be landmines all over the place emotionally where you get triggered and withdraw. When I was 19, I ended up in a really abusive relationship, um, which I, I now see as sort of like the catalyst for my awakening in a way. Um, there was at one point where um, he had um, hurt me and I was in the bathroom, I had locked myself in the bathroom. And I looked in the mirror and I could hardly recognize myself, but all of a sudden it was as if the top of my head opened up and just this message poured in and it was just like, Shalina, you're going to be speaking on stage to women about this one day. Like, this is what you're meant to be doing. Um, when we get into things like betrayal or relationships not working out and we go back and we get really still, your initial intuitive hit is spot on. The problem is, is that you get all this other stuff that starts to come up that's like very powerful biochemistry. So you might have a, for example, a first impression where your biochemistry is like, this guy's just like my abusive father. It feels like home. But your intuition is like, nah, girl, this is toxic. Like, oh, shut up, shut up. We're gonna, we're gonna move forward, right? Because we're gonna, this is exciting and fun or whatever, right? Masculine value, the masculine value is that I, my consciousness is free. Like you can feel the, the depth of my connection to the infinite truth of life in my body and in my, in, just in my aura, I guess, if you want to use that word, you can feel it. It's physical. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's tangible. Mm -hmm. um, and so you can feel the depth in me. And when you feel that in me and you're my romantic partner, chances are it's going to feel good. Mm -hmm. And so if you just let your body respond, with the energy that's wanting to come through you mm -hmm. it's the feminine gift so the feminine gift is the response of energy to consciousness and depth mm. right and then it becomes a dance and like the more energy you bring the more present he gets the more fierce he gets the more you know penetrative with his gaze he gets the more attention more his attention just comes like on you but you know and we all see this we see this in our most intimate relationships whatever partnership we have an intimate partnership in life rarely do people grow at exactly the same time in exactly the same direction often one one will be the explorer and more open-minded and the other will be more content with what has been learned and discovered in the past. And so the explorer may open new doors and then the content one has to choose, do I want to grow and go through these doors with my partner? More of us than, than not sit on the more codependent end of the spectrum. If you would have asked me a decade ago though, Danica, if I was codependent, I would have looked at you, laughed, said, <laughs> Not at all. Definitely not. Wrong I knew me. what codependency was a decade ago. I just didn't know how that it applied to me. Mm -hmm. So when I talk about it now, I talk about a much more expanded definition of it. Because like mm -hmm. I said, I do believe a lot of us are struggling mm -hmm. with that in our relationships mm -hmm. for a lot of different reasons. Essentially what it is, though, is a blurring. So I'm a person. If we think about me with like a little you know, kind of cell membrane around, a circle around yeah. me, right? So to, to be in a healthy relationship, I believe in interdependence. So there is a space, like we, we are social creatures. We benefit from relationships, relating with others, help even just from division of labor to stress reduction. We need relationships. Right. So I'll give you an example. So um, my husband recently came to me and expressed what you would call a boundary. We have, we live in an old farmhouse and the garage is um, like at the lower level. So you kind of pull in, you can park up top or you can pull around underneath to the garage. And um, whenever we get packages, you obviously have boxes that arrive to the house. You have to carry them downstairs after you unpack the boxes from Amazon or wherever in order to get them into the recycling bins. Mm -hmm. Well, I have a habit of stacking up the boxes, empty boxes, like a giant tank, like Tango or whatever game it is, right at the top of the door to the stairway to the basement. And for years I've done this and my husband has never said anything. 
what he's done is he gets passive aggressive mm -hmm. where there'll be 11 boxes there and then he's like ripping the tape off and like like angrily like <laughs> slapping the things down and i'm like why y'all wow. like that you know like or he like throw the things down the stairs and everything like or like pick them up in a huff and finally he said to me would you please take the boxes downstairs to the garage so when you talk about your initial impression right it's like well what part of we are you are we talking about right if mm. we're talking about butterflies and biochemistry you know um that's not an indicator of long-term relationship health like just because you have good chemistry doesn't mean anything because good chemistry is not what creates a long-term relationship you can build good chemistry over time because if you have a friendship first, if you have an emotional connection first, if you have emotional safety first, you can learn the, what other people, the other person needs in terms of whatever their buttons are that pushes their chemistry a certain way. Um, and sometimes initial chemistry can just be like an automatic familiar trauma response from the past. And sometimes it's very healthy, right? So th it, there's no like right or wrong answer, but what you want to try to get at, and so like what I tell people when it comes to dating, right? It's like, if you're interested in someone or pursuing somebody, or you're kind of in that in between phase, you don't make a move. I don't care one day, two day, three day, 10 days, however long, whatever the dating, ex who cares about dating experts and all that stuff, who cares? Until you're in a state where you feel clear about what you're gonna do and you're not operating from like, oh my God, I need to respond or uh, <gasps> butterflies, right? Or any of that stuff, right? Until you're like really clear on like what you wanna say and like it's coming from like a really solid place, do not respond. <laughs> okay like slow it down right what's the rush right and i actually think it's important in new relationships to like have that magnetism happen where you slow things down because a lot of times it can be a trauma response to rush into relationship too fast and not pay attention to the signals that your body's giving you let's flip the roles mm -hmm. and what would a woman do to sort of initiate or start that energetic exchange process mm same rules just let, let's just call the moment a blank slate like the moment's a blank slate he could be watching tv he could be cooking dinner he could be sitting outside and the moment is this blank slate and so if you come to the moment and you bring energy that occurs to his nervous system as enlivening nourishing pleasurable energy then you've now brought the energy to the moment right and he will likely you know unless he's just totally distracted he will likely take a deep breath he won't even know he did this he'll look at you right because you've now got his attention and he'll take his awareness literally his awareness his consciousness and he'll place it on you mm -hmm. right and so you've you've now sparked that moment just by right now who knows it's your art, right? So it could be you sit next to him and you start twirling your hair. It could be like, what are you reading? Right? And whatever it is, it could be you kind of sashay next to him and let him feel your hips. It could be, it could be anything. It could be just like you purr at him. All of that is energy. And what I see in, I mean, I'd lead lots of workshops. And what I see is that men, men are craving energy from the feminine craving 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 it it's why they watch porn it's why it's why they you know it's why they get attracted to certain kinds of women um because they because in this incredible feminist revolution which again i'm a huge fan of y'all can't take over the planet fast enough for me but there's a certain level of energetic repression that happened culturally, if you, if you know what I mean. And so women are less apt to reveal the truth of their heart. They're less, they're more fearful to reveal their kind of giddiness or their pleasure or their, you know, some of it's because men have not treated them well and that's totally legit. But in a, in a romantic relationship, that energy is the gift. It's like, it's literally like food for his heart. And this might sound silly, but it's a lot of us that don't know how we want to spend our time and maybe look to someone else or worry about the effects of how I want to spend my time, how that would 
affect someone else. So like sure. if I have a partner, right? I feel like yeah. I always have to check in, well, what are we doing Saturday, partner? Yeah. Instead of, well, Saturday, I want to do this. And it's okay, partner, if you don't want to do this with me. So it can be anything from behaviors, like what I want to do, how I want to spend my time, to thoughts, right? A separation where I can allow you to have separate beliefs, I can have separate beliefs. A lot of times families, this is where this originates. My mm -hmm. family, we had mantras. We had things that the Laperas believed. This is what we believed as a unit with no space for, well, maybe Nicole or you know my sister over here yeah. believes differently. Huh. And then feelings. Mm -hmm. And I think this is the area where when I said that catch all, we all are a little codependent. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of us connect our feelings with someone else's. Meaning I, it's like I, I talk about it like a roller coaster. Right, so where I'm reacting emotionally to the emotions everyone else is having in the world, to what they think of me. So that's another barrier that we wanna put into place where I can have my feelings, cause we're all different. Yeah. Things are gonna affect me differently than they affect you. And again, back to that healthy relationship, I think there needs to be space where I can have feelings that might be separate from other people's and where I don't gain my value based on how I feel about myself, based on other people. You know, what you might want to call like an unconscious or a conventional relationship versus a conscious relationship is that in a conventional relationship, if you do something to hurt me, my first instinct is to react, to blame you, to demonize you, and to put all of the blame on you and and then to do whatever my coping mechanism is. Sure. So, okay, so that could be trying to convince you to love me deeper because I have this wound in me that needs validation. Mm -hmm. It could be to ghost you because, you know, once you've hurt me, you're out. Mm -hmm. um, whatever that coping mechanism is, that's where I would deploy it and, and I would continue on the pattern. Now, in a conscious relationship, the only thing that makes it really different is that when you hurt me, I'm able to sit with that and share what hurt me and set a boundary if needed, and also look within myself and ask questions like, what does this represent for me right now? What does this feeling remind me of? Mm. Is there a time when I was little where I remember feeling this way? And, and then I can go deeper and like, what is the fear underneath that? Mm. And then how can I share my need in a way that you can now meet me? So instead of pushing love away, I'm learning how to work with what's coming up in me as a way to bring me closer to you in relationship. And then also for some of us who like to use spiritual language, you know, closer to God or to source or to higher power, whatever. Do not gather them at the top. And I said, why? I said, I'm gathering there so I don't have to make 15 trips. And I know you want them flat. I don't have time. And so I'm putting my, and he's like, no, I need you to hear me. I need you to stop doing it. It's a major boundary for me. And then he explained why, which was mm. super helpful. Yeah. When I exactly. see that tower of cardboard boxes, it makes me feel like you think I'm the maid. It makes me think you're stacking that there for me to take care of. And it makes me feel like you don't care about me. Ugh. And when you explain it that way, I'm like, yeah. oh my God, no problem. There will never be another box here. And there hasn't been because I understand yeah. what he's working on and why this is important. And he incorporated feelings. Mm -hmm. He actually knows how he feels and he's communicating it. And communication is the most important thing.